In the previous section, I did an automatic transformation of data using the box Cox transformation. The question I want to ask you now is, why does it work? So why do I want you to know why a method works? First, understanding the foundations of the methods you use gives you a better sense of why things go wrong and what to do about them when they do. Second, this stuff is beautiful and I want you to see a glimpse of this beauty. Does this mean you can't use a method until you fully understand it? Of course not. Remember that the best way to learn is first to learn how to do the method. Then, once you're confident, you can learn why the method works. So, now let's have a look under the bonnet of the Boxcox transformation. We'll call the variable we're interested in x and the transformed version x star. In the Boxcox method, we consider this general transformation. The Greek symbol there is called lambda. Why use English when Greek is so much cooler? That parameter lets us control what type of transformation is done. For example, when lambda equals 2, we get x star equals x squared minus 1 all over 2. So we have a square transformation. In fact, by changing lambda, we can get any power transformation that you might want. But I hear you ask, what about the log transform? Ah, good question, young Padawan. This is where Box and Cox were so clever. With some calculus, we can show that as lambda approaches 0, we get x star equals log x. So we have a general form that gives most of the transformations that you might want. In this figure, you'll see the relationship between x and transformed x for lambda equal to 0, 1, and 2. Notice how when lambda equals 0, the curve looks like a logarithmic curve. So, how do you choose lambda? By letting the data itself decide the value. You look at lots of possible values of lambda and choose the one that gives the best fit of the data to the model that you're considering. You fit lambda using something called the likelihood. We'll discuss this in much more detail in course four. But next, we'll look at how you can reduce the number of variables in your data set.